What's going on guys? We have another trade to announce. Seems like there's a new trade every single day right now in the NHL, leading up to the deadline. LA Kings trade Tyler Toffoli, the Vancouver Canucks, for Tim Schaller, Tyler Madden, 2020 second round pick, and a conditional fourth round pick in 2022. So I feel like the Canucks definitely could use a top six winger. Toffoli, you know, should fit that perfectly. Uh, I think he's on expiring deal as well. So will he resign? Will he not? Probably not too big a deal for the Canucks as, you know, they're in a playoff spot right now. They want for that playoff run. So 27 year old winger here, 82 overall, making 4.6 again one year left on his contract i feel like he's a solid player he's actually already got like 30 something points right now uh, he tied his last year total in like 25 less games so pretty impressive roll there second line forward you can see he's just a good solid winger good shot good hands i'm uh, not the fastest guy ever but um, I feel like he should fit well in the Canucks. I think a lot of people are already penciling him in on the second line with Horvat and Pearson. So kind of cool as well, like two-thirds of the that 70s line they had in the cup runs with Carter, of course. Um, he's going to be playing on the Canucks now. And again, I just want to show you guys kind of career stats there. So yeah, 34 points we had last year. He's already got that in, I think, like 58 games this year. So uh, definitely playing a bit better. Career high, 15-16. He had 58 points, 31 goals. So I'll uh, be curious to see you know, how he does on the Canucks. I feel like he should honestly play really well and doesn't have a lot of trade value either. So I feel like... Um, the Canucks might say no here to what we're asking back, but uh, Tim Schaller, of course, is kind of like a cap dump, as you guys will see. I assume his value is on the other side here. Maybe it's actually not. Oh, no, yeah, it's pretty bad. So, uh, where is he? 20 years old, 77 overall, making 1.9. Only one year left, though, so, of course, helps with the cap and everything again. He's basically just there to make the cap work out. He's a fourth liner, kind of getting overpaid, honestly, uh, real life and in this game. And on top of that, they actually get a solid prospect, Tyler Madden. And right now he's playing pretty well in college, but because he's a college player, he's not in the game. So based on his stats in college, being a former third round pick in 2018, we're basically just going to have to guess at his value. And I feel like it's probably around Hogander here, 18, 61, medium top six. I think he's actually, what would be 19 or 20, but I feel like his value would be around Hoglander. Maybe a bit less, but I don't know. At looking at everyone else there, I feel like Hollinger is kind of the closest thing. Also, Hollinger doesn't have a contract, so it would actually work um, in terms of the trade. And then again, uh, the second round pick, 2020. So Vancouver won't have a first or a second, assuming they make the playoffs. And then the 2022 conditional fourth round pick uh, to fully re-sign to the Canucks. The Kings get this. If he doesn't, they don't. So we're just going to ask for the second right now. And as you can see, Vancouver will be over the league maximum salary cap. Um, so that shouldn't be the case, but... Um, real life to Foley, you know, Kings are not keeping anything. I'm not sure why we have to keep something here. Like, I wonder what's going on in the game that's not going on in real life that's making us do this. But, um, luckily for, like, our side, it doesn't matter. It's going to be a bit weird, though, when we try from the Canucks perspective. So, we're retaining 40% there. It just makes the trade even better. And still, if you look at it, though, with the Foley retained, I mean, shallow hauling your second round pick. The value there is way on Canucks side. Again, it seems like all the trades this year, the deadline deals, are really favoring the teams that are selling. You know, it's definitely a seller's market. Just the Foley trade, uh, the Coleman trade, the Zucker trade, uh, compared to years past where it seems like we're not getting nearly enough for the player you're trading. I remember Thomas Vanek, I think, had like 50 points at the deadline and barely got a third round pick and that was it. So uh, it's very curious, you know, why teams are paying so much more now than years past. But yeah, medium difficulty here. I'm sure Canucks say no to this. And yeah, trade is rejected. So I um, kind of figured that would happen. But of course, you know, we'll try now from the Canucks perspective. Soon LA will say yes. And after that trade, guys, just an update look at the Kings lines. Obviously, rebuilder before the trade. Trade away to Foley. They're still rebuilder. And honestly, like, they're definitely trying to tank here. Give themselves the best odds getting Alexi the friend here. Because, I mean, they've traded away Campbell and Clifford to Toronto already. Just trade away to Foley. And if you look at this lineup here, it's pretty bare. Like, there's not much. Obviously, you still have Kopitar. Um, Carter's not what he used to be. Still a decent player, but 5.2 is definitely a bit much for Jeff Carter right now. Uh, I look at the bottom six there. Really, you know, not too much going on. So, uh, luckily for them, they have a ton of, you know, young players coming up. Of course, they just got Trevor Moore back from Toronto. Uh, they got Alex Turcotte. They got Gabe Velarde. Um, there are some things to look forward to. Plus, of course, they're going to have another high pick this year. Um, defensively there, I feel like Martinez, if he doesn't get traded at this deadline, will probably get traded in the summer. Um, for sure, I think next deadline. Really, other than Doughty, not a lot there. Again, they trade away Campbell, but I think Peterson's probably the goalie of the future for them. Quick, hasn't looked as good, but he, of course, doesn't have a really great team in front of him. Uh, basically, all three California teams right now, LA, Sharks, Anaheim, um, all look to be entering a rebuild. San Jose is the only one who just might be trying to hold on just because of, you know, the core of that team's more veterans and big contracts. But LA and Anaheim for sure, you know, bringing in a whole new wave of players. And like I was saying before, guys, we're not going to try to trade from Vancouver's perspective. As you can see here, LA actually is interested in both Schaller and the second round pick. Pretty surprised about Schaller because... You know, making just under 2 million there as a 77 is really not that great. Also, to decide to switch out Hoglander for this Gadrovich guy, uh, he's a bit similar, I think, maybe to the college player. 
Uh, 20 years old there, which is the same age as the college player. A bit higher rating, but only has medium top 9 opposed to medium top 6. He was actually a second rounder back in 2017. Hopefully, too, they'll make the trade a bit closer. I think with Hoglander, obviously, LA says yes, but maybe now... You know, they have at least some consideration about whether or not they want to do this. And to fully there, we actually have them retaining 50k on. So, I'm not sure why, again, in-game, this trade, you know, doesn't work the salary cap, but in real life it is. Interesting enough, uh, Martinez is on the block, but Toffoli is not. So, even though LA is a rebuilder there, they just don't want to trade Toffoli. But, I feel like this trade, looking at the value, they probably say yes here. We'll see what happens. If not, too, we can actually add the fourth round pick, assume Toffoli resigns with us. So, here we go. And trades rejected, <laughs> they don't want to retain the salary. Oh my god, that's such a joke. Because, like, 50k, no team would actually, like, nix a deal due to 50k. Uh, let me see if I can, like, work something out here. Alright, guys, so I just had to play down to the minors, so the trade should work now in terms of the salary cap. Also, too, I totally forgot a couple solid prospects LA also has. Uh, Kiliev, they got second round last year, which I thought was a steal. Just a true sniper. Should be a sick pick. Um, same goes, of course, for Thomas. Was awesome in the World Juniors. So, um, again, LA fans, I think, you know, they have a lot of solid young players to work around. And like I was saying, because I sent to play down to the minors, this trade... Hopefully should work. They still want Shaller there. Um, again, I feel like we just trade away the guy with the medium top nine opposed to Hoglander. It's probably a bit more accurate in terms of Matt's potential. And then, of course, the second round pick there, 2020. So, yeah, now the trade would be league approved. They mentioned the salary cap, and that was it. So, we'll see if they say yes. And trade is accepted. So, there you go. Uh, basically, says in-game they feel LA got the better trade. And honestly, we kind of seen the last few trades. It's definitely a seller's market. So far, I think every team that's been selling has won the trade. And no difference here. And before the trade, guys, the Canucks team stats was contender. Even after adding to Foley, they're still a contender. It doesn't quite, you know, push them over the hump uh, to champion team status. So when they're healthy, this is kind of just my best guess of their lines. I feel like the top six is pretty accurate. You got Miller, Peterson, Besser, pretty sick first line uh, to Foley, Horvat, Pearson. Again, I feel like Horvat's got to change his number to 70 something as a sort of like reincarnation of that 70s line. Uh, third line there, you got Levo, got Det, Vertanen. Fourth line, Roussel, Sutter, Ferland. Again, the bomb six, I'm not so sure about. I feel like a lot of those parts are interchangeable. Maybe Jay Beagle gets in there. Uh, some different guys. Defense is what they're rocking right now. Edler, Stetcher, Tanev, Hughes, Ben Myers. I think it's pretty solid. Um, in game, actually, you put Hughes on the top. That second pair there gets plus three, but that's what they have in their life, so we'll just put it there. Uh, Markstrom, Demko, of course. Markstrom's playing insane. Big reason why the Canucks are kind of in the spot they are. And of course, Demko's one of the better young goalies in the league. So, speaking of changing, you know, Horvath's number to 70. I'll show you guys what to fully looks like here as a Vancouver Canuck. I feel like it probably doesn't look too bad. I actually saw an image on Twitter uh, with Rock rocking like the retro Canucks jersey with Horvat. Looked pretty good. But we'll see here what he actually looks like um, rocking the jersey in game. So hopefully it comes up. There we go. To fully game face isn't too bad. Kind of looks like him. Again, 73 there to fully. Um, yeah, it doesn't look too bad. His hair might be a little bit darker, I think, than it actually is in real life. But uh, we've definitely seen worse ones, so that's going to be it guys for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, leave the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And as always guys, thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.